So we must make sure that one, our, our buses are equipped with uh, safety procedures and make sure that the frequency um, is, uh, the buses come more frequently and also that there's better partnership and coordination with our local governments like our schools. I just spoke with a neighbor over here who was talking about how when the school is uh, recessed, there's just so many students and that they are really concerned about the safety of the students riding the buses. So that is my plan as county commissioner, partnering with all our local governments, making sure that we have better frequency, um, safety, and making sure that people can actually use our transit system. Thank you, Mai Chong. We're gonna stick with you for this next question. Please describe how you would work with people who you do not agree with in order to accomplish your goals. Oh, yes. So for example, rent stabilization. So that, I have supporters on my campaign who have supported both rent stabilization and those who have not. And I supported that. But really the bottom line is that we need stability in our community. And that is what we all believe in. And the belief is that we also need to build more affordable housing. And to do that, we must make changes to our policy. And that is what happened. And so um, as county commissioner, I would bring in parties together to talk through those issues so that there's common language, common ground understanding to make policy changes and recommendations. Thank you, Ying, same question. Just lost my answer. We need some audio on Ying's microphone. Lost my audio. Oh wait, try again. Okay, in my past uh, work experience, I've had to work with um, a lot of teams and um, I'm a team player and I believe in listening to everyone uh, you know, being on the board, I'm going to be working with seven commissioner, and that's going to be part of what I will be doing is uh, communicating with these uh, commissioner, voicing my concern, and I'm not afraid to put in, you know, what I would like to have done. And I'm going to be the voice for the east side, and I'm going to make sure that every decisions that we make at the board will benefit uh, our east side. Thank you, Ying. We're going to stick with you for the next question. Please describe an ethical dilemma you have faced. How did you resolve it? I work in the financial industry, so I value uh, rules and regulations. Um, I will not do anything that's unethical. I will you know, look at the rules and see what I can do and follow them uh, to the way that they're supposed to be because I don't believe in twisting the rule to make something better. I believe in finding solutions to uh, you know, to problems and issues, and that's one thing that I've been really good at in my jobs is I'm a problem solver, and I will find solutions and problems to um, you know to resolve the sh solutions or the issues that are at hand without uh, violating any ethical issue. You know, ethical codes are. Thank you, Mai John. Yeah, I've been thinking about that in terms of my analysis that I would bring in. I deeply believe in a world in which we are all included, regardless of race, class, gender, or age, that we all have equal access and opportunity. And so when I'm faced with that, I center on my values about my fight for social justice, racial equity, and economic justice. And I layer that onto the lens about who has power in this in my decision making. And I will always center the working class people and I will not become a part of the status quo. So I will make sure that every day, in my fighting the powers that keep all of us down, poverty, corporate um, exploitation of working class people. So that's what I will always use to center me in making decision. Thank you, Mai Chong. We're gonna stick with you for the next question. Please describe your experience managing budgets. Yes. So. I have been working in the city hall for the last eight years, public financing um, and all the tools and the different streams of incomes that come along with it. What I have to do as a policy aide is I have to make sure that you know, the budget actually reflects our values and that we are actually making sure that uh, we accomplish what we want to see. Many times we have all these broad policies but it does not get funded and people feel hurt and impacted. For example, minimum wage, earned sick and safe time, 
tenant protections. Those are all policies that have been passed but need funding and support for it. So those are the examples that I have, uh, the experience that I have in, in making sure that we are actually abiding by uh, the ordinances, rules, and the uh, regulations that have been passed. Ying, same question. In my experience in accounting, I manage budget for a large corporation with over $50 billion in budget. And my role is to make sure that all the expenses that are going through are reasonable. There's, is there, you know, there's explanations for why things are um, charged the way they are, and we do look for solutions on how to reduce expense because that reduces the bottom line, and that means for the county, it's going to be more money for us to spend. And it's keeping a good look on uh, what's happening in the, in the district because, you know, looking at the budget, you can look to see uh, what expenditures are coming and why is the expenditure so high in certain part of the season. So those are things, you know, with, uh, within the budget. And so my, I have over 20 years experience working with budget in management role, and that's one of my biggest things. I report directly to the board of director for these, um, for this, uh, you know, for this company. And I have to write a you know, five-page report on expenses every quarter. Thank you. Ying, we're going to stick with you for the next question. So one of the goals of Ramsey County, established by commissioners, is to cultivate economic prosperity and invest in neighborhoods with concentrated financial poverty. If elected, how would you work to cultivate economic prosperity in District 6? And it goes back to uh, the questions of the budget, because the um, county is made up of, you know, $870 million budget. And one of my biggest uh, goals is economic development. And it's looking to see, you know, looking at the financial statements, meeting with the management uh, in the county, meeting with different, uh, a different sector of the, uh, of the county to see how and what we can save and how, you know, what we can streamline and uh, seeing you know, what else needs to be done to make the uh, county better. Because my first role as county commissioner is going to be really take a deep look at the financials of the county. Mai Chang, same question. This is a great question. Um, so I've been talking about equal access to opportunities. And on the east side, we are super young, super diverse, but half the households make less than $50,000 a year. That is hard to even think outside of your nine to five job or your second or third job that you have to keep your families afloat. So what we need is investment. We need access to capital. We need to make sure that there are resources diverted to this district. And that means that we have to make sure that our plans reflect that and that it's actually coming to concentrated areas of poverty. But like what I like to call it is areas of investment, of opportunities. And that is us. That's the east side. So we need job workforce development. And we need to remove those barriers so that people can gain better jobs and access to skills. In addition to that, access to the jobs. Thank you. As a reminder, if you do want to ask questions, please raise your hand. Leslie will come by with an index card, and she will pick them up when you're done. Mai Chang, we're going to stick with you for this next question. So if elected, what would you do to create more transparency between the county government and the public? That's a really good question, too, because um, we haven't had a new county commissioner for the last 20 years. And since then, the east side has changed so much. Like I mentioned, 60% of us are under the age of 35. We're super diverse, many multiple languages spoken at home. And so we need to make sure that one, our, um, the materials that we have are translated, and we need to make sure that the communications that we send out are available in the newer technology, right? Text messaging, um, through emails, and not just rely on snail mail because things can just change so rapidly. So we must make sure that there is connection um, uh, to, uh, to uh, technology in that way. Ying, same question for you. As your county commissioner, I will create an open office policy and you will see me very active in the community. I've been door knocking, doing a lot of meet and greet, and I hear loud and clear that residents 
want the county to be more transparent and available to their needs because you are selecting me to be your county commissioner. So I need to know what, you know, what it is that you need so that I can go back to the county and make sure that your needs are met. And that's one of the most important part of being a county commissioner is that you know, it's your vote, so you need to decide who do you want to represent you on the county board. We're gonna stick with you for this next question, Ying. How would you ensure that county residents have an opportunity to be heard at county board and committee meetings and other advisory meetings? Back to the same thing, because I am going to have an open office policy and my residents in the Ramsey County will know that I am accessible to them any hour of the day because I'm going to be building a forum so that I can be posting information about what's happening in the county, what's happening in their district, what's happening, you know, where they live. And if they have questions, they are able to, you know, write their questions on the forum or just come to the office because I know nobody wants to go to downtown. But I will be out in the community once a, you know, once a month, twice a month, uh, as needed for my residents to be connecting with me and asking questions so that I could go back and represent them well. Ying, we're going to stick with you for this next question. Oh, my I didn't get a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Go ahead. My turn. Yes. Um, and then can you repeat the question again, too? I can do that. <laughs> what would you do to ensure that county residents have an opportunity to be heard at both county and county board and committee meetings and other advisory meetings? Yeah, that's a really great question because we have so many committee boards um, in addition to that different commissions and boards and advisories that um, people can have an opportunity to serve on. And so I will be looking to you all to do that, to serve on it, to provide um, input on a lot of the decision making that happens. Um, and then it also, um, what I've been talking about the campaign trail is also about co-governing um, and this is the vision that I had painted when I first started running and being very intentional and in getting our east side elected leaders to endorse my campaign. And that's why I didn't look to Minneapolis or anything like that, right? I looked to like our east side leaders and asked for them to endorse my campaign because my vision is that we continue to campaign. After election day, we will continue to door knock, that we will collectively host um, town hall so that our east side members know exactly what our east side leaders are doing so that we have town halls together, we can troubleshoot, we can hear the stories at the doors and continue to incorporate that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ying, we're gonna ask you this next question. My family lives right off of White Bear Avenue. We like to get around our neighborhood by walking and biking, but White Bear's traffic makes that extremely dangerous. Would you support restripping White Bear similar to Maryland, at least in residential areas? If not, what measures do you support to increase pedestrian and bicyclist safety in our area? Yes, I would support the, um, uh, I, was, I would support the restripping White Bear to you know, be similar to uh, Maryland. Because I believe, you know, in this society, this world, we're, you know, it's a, it's a really good way for us to stay healthy and to going around in the community. We've relied too much on cars, and it's, it's got a bad impact on our, um, you know, our health. And that's one thing that I want to be able to do is to, you know, create programs so that our uh, residents here on the east side will have accessibility to um, use bike lane because I've been on bike, uh, you know, lane around Johnson Parkway and it's been a really pleasure to bike around the city and have a healthy uh, way of looking at our city. Thank you, Mai Chang. Same question. Yeah. Um, I would definitely be supportive of uh, making sure that White Bear is accessible to all transit users. For example, on Rice Street, in my role as a policy aide, we worked with Commissioner Mattis Castillo's office, the council president's office, and council member Tao to make sure that Rice Street is actually safer and that it doesn't have the fatal fatality crashes as it does. It is one of the most dangerous roads in our state. And so what, what we did was we brought community members together and the North End is super diverse too. So there are multiple languages there. We had multiple community engagement sessions, brought in the businesses, um, the uh, neighbors who lived there, door knocked and made sure that they were a part of that process and that input. So before I make any big changes, I would do that, but also follow the data that the county has already done on White Bear and make sure that all those voices and per perspectives are included and that 
we are all safe using White Bear Avenue. Mai Chang, we're gonna stick with you for the next question. Do you have a political mentor, mentor or a politician you look up to? If so, please describe. Yeah, so I have very many um, in, uh, in my time as um, policy aide, a lot of the uh, city council members that I've uh, worked with very closely, and then also on the county board, um, Commissioner Manis Castile, who has also endorsed my campaign, who's the board chair, she is someone that I look up to because she's brought in so much new energy and a focus and attention that she's been able to bring in those resources to her district. And that's the type of tenacity and focus and attention that I will be bringing to the county too. Ying, same question for you. I have two mentor um, since I've been campaigning and I've been on the east side. The first one is Commissioner uh, Jim McDonough, who is very, very humble, uh, knows his district very well, uh, connect with his resident. My other one is Senator Fong Ho, and I've been, you know, campaigning with him for a couple of, uh, for a year now, and he is one of the most humble person that have taught me to have humility, to not put myself above other, to love people, because you go around with him, anybody on the east side knows Senator Fong, knows um, Commissioner Jim McDonough, and this is the type of um, commissioner that I want to be. I don't want to be a dictator at the front not knowing who my residents are. I want to know every single people that is in my district because I am representing each and every one of them. Ying, we're gonna stick with you for the next question. Have you worked on any issues that led to change in our community? If so, please describe. Um, I have not worked on any issues um, that have changed the community. Um, I believe that if I have issues in the future, I will be looking to my PAC's experience on how I evaluate situations, how it's going to affect uh, the district. I want to make sure that I get all of the voters, all of the residents' input before I make any decisions on the board. And I want to look at every statistics you know, that are out there, I will read through everything to make sure I have a very good understanding of the decisions that I am making and how it's impacting the residents and how it's impacting the county because at the end of the day, I am responsible for both the county and the residents that are there. My Chang, same question for you. Yeah, this is super good. Um, so at the city level, uh, we have um, this program called the Inspiring Communities Program. Um, it's federal dollars um, meant to provide affordable housing. Um, and after a few years, we were looking at the data about who was actually um, purchasing the homes, who, who was getting into the homes. And what we found was that um, it was not predominantly people of color. It was not black families. And so what I did was I worked with our PED or the planning economic development team to actually focus more um, resources into our rental programs too because that's where people of color are living in, in rental housing and they deserve dignity as well. And so we did that and then in addition to that for um, our tax credit scoring, we, we added a point to make sure that um, whoever wants to develop affordable housing actually um, do not discriminate and that they will accept Section 8 vouchers. And so those are some of the policy changes that I have been a part of and have made an impact in. Thank you. Mai Chang, we're going to stick with you for the next question. What can the county do to help make housing more affordable? This is great, too, because thank uh, Thank you to the County Board of Commissioners for having an HRA levy directed at affordable housing at 30% of AMI. That means that we get more focused money towards building affordable housing, building new affordable housing, and also preserving the current housing stock that we have here on the east side. We are one of the last places here in the city that has affordable housing, and that is why we see so many young families moving here that are super diverse, right? It's one of the last places for that. And so we, we must make sure, and also with the income levels at $50,000 a year per household, it means that people do not have money to stretch and fix up their housing. So we must make sure that there are dedicated funds for the preservation of our current housing stock, as well as the building of new housing. And that's why I'm so excited to um, be in office and make sure that we deliver on those affordable housing also at Hillcrest. Um, and that is the top priority for building affordable housing. Thank you, Ying. Same question for you. In my walk around the county, I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people talk about 
That's one of the biggest issues is affordable housing. As your county commissioner, one of the things you know, that I'm going to look at the county is do we have abandoned lots? Do we have, you know, if we're building, because we have several properties in um, the Ramsey County that we can build into more affordable housing. And those are options that I will be looking at as a county commissioner. I can't say what they are right now because I, like I said, you know, my thing is I need to look at statistics. I need to look at, you know, talk to the residents, look at uh, what is needed in the community. Then go back to the board and see, you know, find resolutions and find solutions on how I'm going to uh, work with uh, bringing what, ki what type of program because that's something that we as uh, the county board is able to do and able to find. Thank you, Ying. We're going to stick with you for the next question. Please describe any policy experience you have that makes you qualified for this position. Uh, working in the financial industry and especially in the investment industry, there's a lot of legality that I have to work with because, you know, our policyholders' money are invested and that's their livelihood. That's, you know, that's money they cannot afford. That's money they are depending on when they are growing old. So, you know, as that industry, we are very, very regulated. And so I work with a lot of um, legal uh, documents and I read a lot of legal documents. So I'm familiar and I believe that my experience in uh, my financial industry is going to be a big asset to the Ramsey County Board. My Chang, same question for you. Yes, so I will want to add on a little bit more about the affordable housing piece that um, I was working on because it's super important. We need to make sure and assess about the outcomes, right? We don't need good intentions. We need to make sure that what we are trying to do actually reaches the people and the demographics that we are trying to serve. And so um, uh, from, from that experience, we evaluated and we also um, uh, wanted to make sure that it actually gets to the people who need it. Another example is um, my work um, organizing community members around rethinking I-94. There are so many different um, perspectives about whether to change it to a boulevard or to put a, a lid on it um, or, or to keep it the status quo. So what I did was I, we kept on pushing back and I did that with the people, right? I kept, uh, we kept pushing back to say, hey, we need to uh, slow it down a little bit, but we need to consider all those options and we need to evaluate the impacts to the community. All right, John, we're gonna stick with you for the next question. So what county services do you believe are critical to ensure the safety and well-being of our community? Yeah, I think about our most vulnerable. Um, the people with the least power, um, and that is um, the children, our seniors, um, and the working class people who feel stretched every single day. So we need to make sure that our county services um, are adapting to that need and that we aren't waiting until people are actually homeless to help them. And then we also think about people in domestic violence situations or child protection. Those are all critical services that I believe we need to fund and we need to make sure that people know about them and that they're culturally relevant and that they're actually being used. Ying, same question for you. All county services are important because we have all types of residents that are in our district. I'm gonna share with you my experience in the county uh, services that you know, uh, what I believe is county services are very important but we can uh, we can improve our county services. And I've had personal experience with county services where my mother had cancer and needed surgery. She waited one month for approvals and passed away right after surgery. My daughter, like I was saying, needed transportation. Three hours to ride on the bus. I will work to better the county response and services for all of our residents. And that's, you know, because every single services is very vital to their lives. Thank you, Ying. We're going to stick with you for the next question. The Ramsey, the Ramsey County Commissioners traditionally come to a consensus and there are usually no split votes. Please describe how your professional life experiences can help build consensus with others when the interests of Eastsiders are at stake. As I stated before, I will be a county commissioner that is very uh, connected to my residents that are in my district. So I will know all of the residents' need. 
And when I work with the other county commissioner, I will be collaborating with them because I am a team player and I believe that if I can bring reason to why I wanted something done or why I do not want something done, that we will come to a consensus that will benefit both Ramsey County because we are responsible for Ramsey County as a whole, not just for my district, which is District 6. And that's something that I'm going to be, you know, bringing in is my experience and my collaboration and my expertise in working with, um, working with other individuals. My Chong. So I, I, I really appreciate this question because um, to me, consensus means that there has been a lot of organizing on the ground and having deep relationships and connections to each other to have those hard conversations. So I believe that even when there is consensus, I believe that as an elected official, I do need to make my case for why I'm voting a certain way. And I do need to share about the conversations that I've been having. And so I'm so proud to have the endorsement of Commissioner, um, our board chair, um, Commissioner Mattis Castillo, as well as Commissioner Rafael Ortega. And I hope to build those, continue and build those relationships with our other commissioners and bring in more resources to the east side. My child, we're gonna stick with you. What is your understanding of the needs of the African American community in Ramsey County and what will you do to address those needs? Yeah, so we must have to acknowledge that our history, our United States history, was founded on the exploitation of black people. We have to acknowledge that and center that in our work. And what that means is that we need to make sure that there are economic opportunities that's very focused, and that we also make sure that there is reparations and that is the work that the city council has already started and that I support. And as a county commissioner, I would want to dig into that work with them to empower that work. Ying? Since I'm going to be a commissioner that is responsible for every single race that is on the east side, I will be working with the black community, with their leaders, and that's what I've been doing right now. I've reached out to the black communities, I've spoken to their leaders, because I need to understand, you know, what is it that I need to understand about the black people? What do I need to understand to be able to go back to the county and get services for them? And what do I need to understand about their culture for them to have a good relationship for me, for them to be open? You know, for them to be uh, to ha to have an open uh, dialogue with me, because that's one thing. When I was talking to Joanne Clark, she says, "I don't, you know, we don't understand black community." And I said back to her, "Well, that is why why I want to reach out to you, because I need to understand black community. I need to know what it is that you need, so that I can represent you well, because I am going to be your county commissioner." Ying, we're going to stick with you for the next question. What will you do as commissioner to ensure that Ramsey County does our part in helping to achieve the state's climate action goals? Environment is one of the biggest, you know, goal um, in my in my platform because uh, if you look at it in today's world, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, the world is going crazy because we're we're having so much pollution in the air. I will be working with environmentalists. You know, I want to preserve a lot of our green uh, that we have in our county. And I will be working with the county to see what we can uh, do as a county to be more green, uh, to not, you know, to not add so much uh, pollution. And with the electric car that's coming out, you know, that's one of the biggest thing is to go out to, you know, to be, to be, uh, uh, moving toward the electric car, car to be uh, getting rid of the exhaust fumes that are, are in our environment that's, you know, that's destroying the environment. Because I want to make sure that I preserve our county and I preserve this earth for my children, my grandchildren that are coming way, you know, way behind me. Mai Chang. Thank you. Super important um, in terms of the policies that we make here is going to continue to impact our future generations. And I believe that the failure in um, addressing our climate change, um, I feel it every day with uh, you know, my son who has asthma. And we've had so many doctor visits. And if it weren't for good health insurance, we'd be broke, we'd be homeless. And that is what many people struggle with, right? 
And so that is on us, before us. Uh, our climate change is a, definitely a race issue. It is dependent upon where you live that that's your health outcomes. And so what I will do is to make sure that our county plans for discouraging single occupancy vehicles, that for any development sites that we have, that we are actually having good environmental review analysis and make sure that we aren't destroying anything that we can't grow back. We're gonna stick with you for the next question. What role does the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office play in public safety? The sheriff plays a big role um, with the county and having strong partnership would mean that we are aligned in making sure that we have coordinated efforts to actually stop crime or to prosecute crime and also to make sure that um, we are deterring um, crime. And that means that we need the county sheriff's office at the table with the county attorney's office, with our judges, with our city council members, with our mayor. And that is the type of relationship that I will continue to bring um, in making sure that that happens so that we are all talking to one another. Ying. I have the endorsement of Sheriff Bob Fletcher, uh, Chief Finney, and I believe that, you know, having a good relationship with our um, with our sheriff department because they're a part of the county services will be a very good um, asset for my, you know for me uh, sitting as a county commissioner because the sheriff office is not only re be responsible for public safety. I spoke to uh, you know Sheriff Fletcher and we talked about programs for our youth, getting kids off the street. You want to do programs for them. You don't just want to keep putting them in jail. You want to do programs to, uh, you know, give them a good direction, have mentorship in the community. Because, you know, if you if we start with these kids at the at the early age, th we are building a really good future for them, and that's going to keep uh, crime off the street, and that's going to keep our city a uh, much uh, better place for people to want to live in. Ying, we're going to stick with you. So, what types of programs would you propose if elected that help to promote workforce development? I will be um, working with um, organization and working with more training, job trainings, uh, finding out what the, my first role will be to find out what the county has right now currently and is it working. If it's not working, what's out there that you know, we could put together to help people, especially people on the east side where they lack skills to be making a livable wage, which is you know, ridiculous because everything is, the inflation is moving so high and people are not able to catch up to it. Because, and that's what I want to be able to do is look and see what we have. What do we need to do? How do, you know, what kind of trainings do we need to uh, do to get people to be in jobs and to be able to afford homes for their family? My Chung. Yeah, this is super, um, it's a really good question because the county does have um, a workforce investment um, dollars. And uh, what I would also like to see like a, bit, uh, like a program is making sure that we are removing barriers for working class people. So it means that if folks are trying to um, get into a new job that pays more, that we are removing barriers, whether that be childcare, transit, or um, you know, background checks, all those things, we need to remove it and make sure that we are partnering with both businesses, our colleges. St. Paul is super rich in colleges, right? And, and our uh, St. Paul College, our Metro State. The, we need to tap into our assets and make sure that we are supporting people and removing barriers. And that's what I will do as county commissioner. Mai Chong, this next question is for you. How will you address the homelessness in Ramsey County, especially the encampments in our parks? Yeah, I've been so, um, I, I would say I've, I've been so proud um, and very privileged to have had the opportunity to um, be um, in city council um, as staff and watching the program um, development occur in the joint partnership between the county, the city, all of its different departments, as well as the nonprofit organizations who provide housing services. Um, and that's the Heading Home Ramsey. So as county commissioner, I would want to be appointed to that board and serve on it to make sure that we are bringing in wraparound services, doing um, direct outreach to people, trying to get them housed, and also making sure that, you know, what are the reasons why they are not housed 
I believe that people deserve housing, regardless of your race, class, gender, or your income. So I will be fighting for that, making sure that we have direct outreach to people and meeting where they are. Thank you. Ying. How I would address uh, homelessness is, you know, I need to find out why these people are homeless. Is it mental illness? Is there, you know, is this something that we need to provide health for, you know, help for them? Maybe, you know, they, because a lot of it is mental illness and they're put out on the street because they don't have anywhere else to go. And if it's a family, because I know every, you know, every family deserves, everyone deserves to have a home over their, you know, over their head. Nobody wants to be homelessness. There's a, there's a reason why they're homeless. And so we need to take a step back and look at it and say, you know, talk to these people. What do we have in the county that we can uh, access? Do we need more programs? You know, how, you know, how, that's one of the things, that's how I approach things is going back to the county, talking to the individuals and see what organizations um, you know, we can send them to, to get help or what other, what other programs that we can develop in the county itself to uh, help these homeless people. Ying, next question is for you. How will you build trust among the diverse people on the east side? I've been building trust uh, since I started campaigning and, you know, last year to this year, uh, working on a Senate uh, district campaign. I'm, I'm out there talking to people. I talk to people. I talk to, um, you know, the black community. I've been to the Somali community. I've been to uh, the Korean community. And that's, you know, building trust, building relationship, and watching Senator Fong, like I said. He's one of my greatest mentors. He loves everybody, and everybody loves him. And that's how you build trust in the, in the, you know, as a county commissioner, because I want them to know that they can come to me if they have a problem. They can come to me, and I will make sure that, you know, their voices are heard. And if I don't, can't find a solution, I'm going to tell them why, you know, why I can't do something for them. So, you know, this is where transparency comes in. Mai Chang. Would you repeat the question again, too, please? Yes. How will you build trust among the diverse people on the east side? Yeah. Um, that's a really great question. I really appreciate that question. How I would build trust is what I have been doing for the last 10 years in my community organizing, is having one-to-ones. That is the bread and butter where I get to know people, get to know their stories, and also get to know their self-interest, because that is where we organize together to actually make very big changes. And also, it just means that, you know, it, it's going to take time. It's going to take time. It's not going to happen on the campaign trail of building trust. And I built, that, I built that trust within the diverse communities, especially in Ward 1 and here on the east side. In my time here, I've been on the east side since I was in high school. And I built those relationships with the folks here. And I plan to continue to do that by bringing more voices together so that we can organize across race, class, gender, and age. So this will be our final question before we head to closing statements. Mai Chong, we're going to start with you. How will you ensure that there's transparency on the board and that policies are being implemented fairly? Yeah, so it's, um, I feel like I've heard this too, again, about transparency, is making sure that, um, you know, the conversations that our county commissioners are having is that they are actually public. And I believe they do a really good job of that already with uh, streaming the work groups, but not a lot of people know about it. And quite frankly, our working class people don't have time for that. So again, what I mentioned is about transparency is making sure that we are bringing our elected leaders um, to the people and hearing their stories and telling them about what we are working on. Ying? As I stated before, as your county commissioner, that's one of the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have an open office policy. And I love to talk to people because I want to know, I want to know your story. I'm going to be representing you on the board. It's not representing myself. It's representing everyone. I want to hear from the black community. I want to hear from the Karen community because they're looking up to me to be elected so that I can go back to the Karen community and help them out, you know, help them uh, in their community. And that's one of the things about building transparency is 
I, you know, I will be sharing what I have. And if something doesn't work, I'm going to have an answer for them so that they know why things are, you know, why something got rejected. Because people deserve to know the answer, not just, you know, there's a no vote on it. Why did it get voted? No. So that, you know, that's where the transparency come in. It did not get voted because there was not enough support. Just like Armong Village, where we wanted a red light at uh, Johnson Parkway. One was not put there because there was not enough data to support a red light. So a walkway was put in there because that, you know, makes sense to put a walkway there. So we're now going to move to closing statements. Each candidate will have two minutes. Mai Chang, you went second during opening statements, so we're going to have you go first for closing statements. Thank you so much again for being here, for spending your time. Um, I'm Mai Chang Zhang. I'm running for Ramsey County Commissioner because I believe in our inherent worth, dignity, and that we deserve investment here on the east side. The east side needs investments, and we are worthy. And we are also worthy of an experienced leader to bring in and deliver those resources. And you can count on me to co-govern with you, to find policy solutions, to make sure that everyone is in and that no one is out, and that we will deliver on affordable housing, safety, transit, and make sure that our county services are accessible. That is deep in me and that I'm fighting every day to end homelessness, to end poverty, and to fight for the working class people. Vote for me, my Chang Zhang, your DFL, labor, and community endorsed candidate. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ying, you have two minutes. This is a historic race and I wanna thank everyone for attending. We are going to have the first woman commissioner in our district and it's going to be a Hmong American uh, you know, woman. Now you've had a chance to listen to the two of us tonight. We have different skills, different views on how to face the challenges you know, on the east side. You will always hear from me, practical in the community solutions and I will never force ideology, uh, unreal unrealistic solutions. We are a community and we will work together to improve our district and county to practical and doable actions. I wanna ask you these questions, and these are questions you should be asking yourself too. Are you satisfied with our public safety on the east side? Can we do better? Yes, we must. Do you have solid, do we have solid economic growth? We can do more. Do we feel our senior and youth are getting the assistance they need? There's more to do for that. Are we taking care of our homelessness and offering enough affordable housing to families? No, we need more. Everyone deserves to have a house for their family. Increasing transit, better access to healthcare, repairing and preserving our environment, these are all possible. There are common sense solutions to these challenges. I am working to earn your vote on November as I believe I can do more for the east side. I wanna be your voice on the county board and I will commit I will work the hardest and smartest for you and only in your best interest. เนี่ยจองเจนิสิกตินิจามุ่งเฉลยกูรองเชียงกังเกาะเฮเดียนุนอนิจามุ่งเนลุเชียวเจาะเจตัวอ่าดอมไม้จองเออเนี่ยเน